ओं दक्षिणा सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता स्मरिया गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागिने व्योमवद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम परिज्ञानाश्रम श्री गुरुशंकर परिज्ञानाश्रम शंकर सद्गुरु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सद्गुरु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनौभुन सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिषा वह ओं शाति 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 सर्वेदात सिद्धांत गोचर तम गोचर गोविंद परमानंद सद्गु प्रणतस्म्य हम सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी कंप्लीटेड व्हाट इज अनात्मा एंड व्हाट इज आत्मा ऑफ कोर्स ओनली द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ व्हाट इज अनात्मा वाज गिवन टेकिंग द ट्री शरीर द स्थूल शरीर द सूक्ष्म शरीर एंड कारण शरीर एंड देन द होल अनात्मा वाज एक्सप्लेन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस and then atma was explained as to what is the swarupa atma what is the nature of atma but how to differentiate actually how to really make that atma anatma viveka how to discriminate between the anatma and the atma was not talked about that is going to talked about in the further verses now the guru is coming to the question asked by the shishya what is the questions first question asked ko nama bandha what is this bondage that i am feeling i am feeling i am a samsari i am a dukhi i am bound what is this bondage ko nama bandha kathamesha agatah from where has this bondage come and then ka asya pratishtha what is the pratishtha what is it that sustains this bondage and lastly how is it that i can get free from this bondage vimokshah asmat bandhat vimokshah how is it that i am going to get free from that these were the four questions which were asked first and bhagwan shankaracharya decided to answer the fifth question and the sixth question first that is the anatma and the atma now bhagwan shankaracharya is going to talk about what is this bondage we all feel this sense of bondage why do we feel this sense of bondage because we find that either in the jagat which we are experiencing every day in our transactions with the jagat or with respect to our body our body mind sense complexes with our own body mind sense complex with respect to the jagat that we are seeing outside with the set of people whom we call my people with respect to all these we don't find anything permanent everything is constantly changing and we do not know what is going to happen next there is so much of uncertainty there is so much of insecurity there is so much of you know kind of a fear fear of what is going to happen fear of death fear of illness fear of aging at the same time most of the things are not under my control i am not having anything under my control so whatever i want to do i cannot do none of the situations ask my permission to come they just come and i have to face them sometimes i have to face them with lot of dukha and klesha sometimes you know i may be happy there are very few moments of happiness and most of the time those few moments are happiness are followed by very very unpredictable situation so the whole jagat i find it as a very unpredictable situation and this becomes my bondage i feel i am one against the whole jagat i feel i am one fighting everything else so this kind of a bondage this kind of samsaritvam which i have 
what is the cause of that that is what is going to be talked about in the next few verses what is this bondage ko nama bandha the very first question of the shishya which was asked to the guru that is going to be now taken up for the answer so let us read the verse 137 137th verse here this verse is more like a prose and we cannot really chant it in a particular meter therefore i am going to chant it like how we chant the shankara bhashya that is how we chant it so atra atra anatmani ahamiti matihi bandah yesho asya pumsah prapto agnana janana marana klesha klesha santap hetu ye nai vayam vapuridam asat अंडरस्टैंडेज मीन i can very well understand what you are going through your dukha your samsaritvam your sense of feeling bound by this unpredictable jagat what is the whole thing what is this ko nama bandha he says atra here anatmani ahamiti matihi the first line here we can go from the first word onwards because it's a kind of a text like thing it's not like word a verse where we have to call out the words from different lines we can go from the left hand side to the right hand side so anatmani aham iti matihi anatmani in anatma body mind sense complex i have the confusion that i am the body mind sense complex this idea matihi means what the idea the idea that i am this anatma anatmani aham iti matihi that means what anatma i am the anatma it is that kind of a understanding mati he means the thought or understanding i have at present the understanding that i am the anatma body mind sense complex so he says anatmani aham iti mati hi in anatma i have the buddhi that i am that anatma i am this body mind sense complex i am as good as the body mind sense complex the body mind sense complex is limited therefore i am also limited the body mind sense complex is changing constantly therefore i am having that unpredictability the jagat is also satyam the jagat is interacting with me the anatma and the jagat is constantly changing and therefore there is this insecurity and unpredictability here in the world also so atra here this bandha is because of anatmani in anatma aham iti matihi bandha this is what is called as the bondage or bandha yesho asya pumsah praptah this is something which a person pumsah means a person a purusha purusha here does not mean a male a person has this kind this kind of a feeling that i am this anatma body mind sense complex and when such a feeling is got purusha praptah agnyanat janma marana klesha sampata hetu because of this ignorance what is my ignorance i don't know i am the atma i am that sakshi chaitanya atma i am that nitya shuddha buddha mukta atma i am the ajaha and then amara immortal infinite atma iti i do not know and because of this agnyanam i am considering myself to be the limited anatma body mind sense complex and since i am identifying myself and i am having an entanglement with the body mind sense complex it is this ignorance which is making me come back again and again into the cycles of birth and death as long as i think i am the body mind sense complex i am afflicted by the incompleteness or apurnatvam in that body mind sense complex 
and to fulfill that apurnatva what do i do i do all kinds of actions all kinds of karmas and that karma gets me karma phalas to go through this karma phala i come back again and again and again into cycles of birth and death punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jatare shayanam that is what in bhajagovindam bhagwan shankaracharya said so what does this mean when i have an identification or an entanglement and i think very strongly that i am the anatma body mind sense complex this ignorance makes me come back again and again into the cycles of life and birth and this ignorance is the hey to who the cause for me coming back again and again what kind of a thing janana marana klesha sampata hetuhu janana marana klesha janana is is a dukha marana is a dukha klesha means dukha birth itself is a dukha it is a dukha for the mother also for the child being born also the entire childhood nowadays is dukha for the child when you grow up also the adult life is also dukha only does it mean that there is no sukha at all there is but there are moments momentary sukha which is followed by dukha therefore what is there is janana marana klesho klesha sampatha janana marana adi dukha this entire journey from the janana up till marana marana itself you know jara vyadhi is there dying also is not that easy it is a painful death in addition there is a fear of death also so it is a klesha all through klesha means dukha janana is a dukha marana is a dukha and in between janana and marana also it is dukha sampat hetu hu this dukha literally falls like a waterfall it simply doesn't come the dukhas just come and rain on me sampat hetu like a waterfall falling this janana marana dukha klesha they come and fall on me and ye naiva ayam vapu idam asat satyam iti atma buddhya the third line what he says is because of this ignorance ye naiva because of this ignorance vapu idam asat this body this thula sharira sukshma sharira karana sharira which is asat i told you in the last session last two sessions what is asat asat does not mean that the body mind sense complex do not exist they exist but they are not the paramarthika satyam they are not the absolute reality they are mithya they are there as though but really speaking they are not there sat asadbhyam anirvachaniyam why because the body the mind and the sense complex are the karyas or the effects of maya and therefore just like maya is anirvachaniya and mithya similarly the effect of maya in the form of the body mind sense complex thula sharira sukshma sharira karana sharira all of them are asat asat means what they have no independent existence of their own therefore as long as this asat dvapuhu i consider as satyam i consider this body to be real not simply the body is real i am this body i am real but the body is mithya but i consider because of the ignorance for the body to be real so idam asat vapuhu satyam iti atma buddhya satyam iti atma buddhya pushyati ukshyati avati i all the time try to keep this body going i do whatever is necessary to keep this body going nothing wrong keeping the body healthy is very important because this is the body the ayatanam even for moksha purushartha but there is an undue entanglement with the body and then what do i do pushyati i nourish it i keep nourishing it nourishing it beyond what is necessary ukshyati i try to beautify it keep it going all the time forgetting that one day this body is going to go i feel as if this body is nithyam it's going to be there all the time 
and i do everything to keep it going as it is i don't want it to age i don't want it to have any disease fine nothing wrong let us do that but let us be aware that in spite of all this avati pushyati ukshyati avati that means what i strengthen the body nourish the body beautify the body and protect the body beyond what is necessary yes we have to protect the body we have to keep it clean and neat there is nothing wrong in keeping the body fine beautifying the body but when it goes beyond a certain extent to the extent that i feel this body is the ultimate there is nothing beyond this body when this kind of a thought comes that is what is called as the bondage and what do i do i try to surround this body by vishayaihi vishayaihi by all the vishayas of the world by all the objects of the world by the situations of the world by the people of the world i try to keep this body going strengthen this body pushyati ukshyati avati this body i try to keep on fattening it and strengthening it with the help of all the vishayas and what is the example that is given he says tantu bihi kosha kridvat kosha krid means a silk worm gives the example of a silk worm bhagwan shankaracharya what does a silk worm do to, to protect itself it weaves around it a cocoon of silk but that which he weaved around that which the you know the uh, this one weaved silk worm weaved around itself to protect itself that cocoon itself becomes the cause of its death do you know how we extract the silk these cocoons are put in boiling water and then this particular silk worm dies and that kosha which you know or that particular cocoon which was spun round by the silk worm that is used for making silk clothes therefore what has the kosha krid done try to protect itself by trying to surround itself with a cocoon made of silk threads but that very protection it wanted to make for itself to live long whatever millions of years the silk worms have been doing it hundreds of year we have been killing the silk worms for silk but still the silk worms have not understood that that cocoon which they have built for their support is what is actually causing them ultimately their death and that is the same thing with the human beings also that though the body is insentient jada though the body is born at a point in time going to die in time but i am not not that i am not aware of it i don't want to accept it and i give a satyatvam to the body and get entangled into that beyond a certain extent and this is what is called as the bondage anatmani atma buddhi is the bondage considering myself to be the anatma body mind sense complex when i am not the body mind sense complex i am that sakshi chaitanya atma this buddhi this wrong notion or the self confusion about myself this is what is called as bandha the answer for first question how has this bondage come about kathamesha agataha that is the second question let us see what the guru answers the shishya about this akhand nitya dvaya bodha shaktya that is 139th verse 139th verse अखंड निवृतिशक्तिरेशमाया maya is going to be dealt with more in detail when the bandha is going to be talked about now here in this verse what is this bandha how it has come about here while talking this another aspect of maya which we did not see in karana sharira that is going to be talked about now this maya or prakriti has two kinds of powers one is a power to cover or veil called as avarna shakti hi 
then there is one more shakti of maya which can project what is called as the vikshepa shakti so what normally happens in a jiva the avidya maya with respect to the individual is called avidya i told you in the last session what happens with this maya this maya because of its tamo guna the tamo guna of maya has the capacity to cover the real therefore this avarna shakti covers as though it covers my idea about the atma it covers the atma why does it cover the atma because tamo guna maya it covers it has the power to cover the real nature of me the atma now you may ask atma is all pervading you said atma is nityam you said and maya is a asat or mithya you said how can this mithya atma cover the mithya maya cover the atma as though it covers how is it let us say now there are clouds which are covering the sun correct but actually speaking the clouds are not covering the sun they are covering my visual axis or where i am seeing this avaranam of the cloud is when i am looking at the sun my vision is covered by the clouds and i cannot see the sun but it is the sunlight because of which i can see the clouds also correct the sunlight is the one which is getting covered by cloud and the clouds are actually doing the avaranam for my vision when i am looking at this at the sun and it is that sunlight itself which is lighting up the clouds also therefore i say there are clouds there and they are covering the sun this is how i talk really speaking they are not covering the sun my vision my vision axis is covered by the cloud similarly the avarna shakti of maya the covering shakti of maya is something which covers my buddhi it does the avaranam of my buddhi and does not allow me to see the reality of atma atma cannot be covered atma is the ultimate reality and maya is atma's shakti therefore maya cannot cover but as though it covers like i gave the example of a movie the movie covers the screen does it really cover the screen no the movie comes in between the screen and my visual axis and i feel that for the time being the screen is not visible because the movie is as though covering the scene that is what i see similarly this maya's avarna shakti actually does veiling of my intellect it is called veiling avarna means veiling literally like a screen is drawn in front of my intellect which does not allow me to see myself as atma this is what is as described as the avarna shakti covering the atma it cannot actually cover the atma it is as though it is covering the atma when the atma is as though covered when i don't see myself as the atma then the vikshepa shakti of maya comes in and projects something which is unreal this is the handy work of maya covering that which is the truth veiling the truth and projecting the false veiling the truth is called as avarna shakti projecting the false is called as the vikshepa shakti similarly a magician a magician's magic veils the magician projects a magic a movie veils the screen and projects a magic projects a you know movie a mirage water it veils the sand underneath and it projects waves of water similarly when it comes to me the jiva this is the reason for bondage this is the reason from where the bondage has come why is it that i don't know myself because the avarna shakti of maya has covered my intellect in seeing the truth of myself as atma and when the truth is covered when the reality is covered unreal idea is projected what is unreal body mind sense complex so what do i say 
I am the body mind sense complex. Many times I don't even know that there is something called as Atma. You ask, you make, you just, you know, ask this question to anybody who is not exposed to Vedanta. Say, ask this question: Do you know what is Atma? No, I don't know. Do you know that you are Atma? No, I don't know. All the time I am Atma, but I do not know there is something called Atma. I do not know that I am Atma because. my idea or knowledge about that atma and my knowledge that my being that atma is completely veiled by this tamo guna of maya called as avarna shakti because of this avarna shakti's veiling of the truth the untruth as to my identification as i am the body i am the mind i am the sense complex has come about this is the reason why bondage has come about let us see the verse here akhanda nitya advaya bodha shaktya this atma which is akhanda which is indivisible advaya one without a second bodha shakti that which is of the nature of consciousness that which is of the nature of awareness Spurantam atmanam ananta vai bhavam, this infinite atma ananta vai bhavam, and this atma which manifests as the entire I am that atma, but I do not know that. Why? Let us see the third line. Samavrnoti avriti shakti resha tamo mai, this tamo mai maya, this maya who has the three gunas which we have already seen. the sattva guna rajo guna and tamo guna so what happens the tamo guna of maya samavruti samavrnoti this means what it covers it veils it is like you have a light and with a dark curtain you cover this light then what happens the light is there the light is on the light is shining but the dark curtain is actually veiling the entire thing people cover their faces with veils the face is there the bright face is there but it is covered by a veil so you do not see that face and when you don't see that face you can assume it to be anything you can fantasize anything about this face similarly this maya shakti especially the tamo guna of maya shakti tamo mayi tamo mai means what this maya which is tamo mai samavrnoti it covers this atma which is what akhanda nitya shuddha buddha bodha shakti atma it covers how does it cover it really does not cover my buddhi is covered in seeing myself as that atma just like i said the light is shining there nothing is wrong with the dry light there is a very black curtain so i don't see the light the sunlight is coming in but i cover all the windows with the dark light dark curtains then what happens here the light does not come in nothing wrong with the light the light is there but i am covering my field of vision with covering that is what is happening here and when the tamomayi maya covers or does the avaranam of the reality the rajoguna of maya projects a vikshepa projects vikshepa means what projects something which is not real like a movie is projected that is why we say anything projected is mithya it is not the reality when i project something it is not the reality it is only a projection i project something which is not true so with the avarana shakti covering as though the atma the rajoguna of maya forms the vikshepa shakti and projects something which is a false notion that is why i keep on thinking of myself to be this body mind sense complex until this avarana shakti is removed for that i have to understand that i am this atma it is the avarana shakti of maya which is covering me and i have to take the help of guru and shastra to remove this veil of ignorance from me this is what i have to know until then 
whether it is lives together millions of lives again and again i am born with the same avarna and the same vikshepa will go on again and again and what is the example he is giving here the example for this last word rahu rahu river arka bimbam like eclipse you know eclipse solar eclipse when solar eclipse is there the rahu planet which is a shadow planet the shadow of the rahu as though covers the sun is the sun really covered no because rahu is not a proper planet also like earth and jupiter and saturn rahu is a shadow we call it as the nodes of the moon that the shadow but what happens this rahu comes in the middle of you know it covers the sun and i cannot see the sun the disk of the sun is covered but it is not covered totally for some time it may cover that's why we have that partial eclipse then the diamond ring appearance and then it is covered what is covered actually sun is not covered my view of sun is covered that is an eclipse cannot be seen by everybody in every place in different countries in different latitudes different longitudes you see the this one why because this rahu eclipses the sun just like this rahu eclipses the sun as though really speaking the sun cannot be eclipsed by rahu because rahu is a shadow and sun is a huge star it cannot be but it covers it veils my vision and for that particular few minutes i see that the sun is completely eclipsed so this eclipsing of my real nature atma and then projecting myself to be something which i am not this is the way the bondage has come about so this is how the bondage has come about now again he says explains the same thing again how vikshepa takes place in the 148th verse भाषा ओनली तिरो भूते स्वात्मनी अमलतर तेजोवती पुमान अनात्मानं मोहाद अहमिति शरीरं कलयति ततः कामक्रोध प्रभृतिभिरमुं बन्धनगुणैः परं विक्षेपाख्या रजसः ऊरुशक्तिर्व्यथयति सबिक वर्स इट्स नॉट अ वर्स इट्स अ टेक्स्ट बट इन अ वर्स इन अ टेक्स्ट फॉर्म सो once this atma is eclipsed tiro bhute swatmani amala tare tejovati this pure amala tejovati the shining light of consciousness once it is eclipsed tiro bhute once it is eclipsed by the avarna shakti of maya then what happens because of this covering next line mohad anatmanam ahamiti because of this tiro bhutam because of this veiling of the real nature of atma by the tamo guna of maya what happens i get into a state of self confusion since i don't see what i really am i get into a state of self confusion i don't even know what i am i don't even know who i am i know i am if you somebody ask me are you there yes i am i am i am it is all the time that i am feeling is there but i am that atma it i do not know it is like seeing a raju seeing a rope in semi darkness and mistaking it for a stake there is something there but i don't see it clearly and instead of the rope i take it to be a snake similarly i know that i am there aham aham it is constantly that spuranam is there i am i exist i am there this constantly is there but i am that atma 
ಐ ಆಮ್ ದಟ್ ಅಮಲ ಆತ್ಮ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದಟ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಆತ್ಮ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದಟ್ ಶುದ್ಧ ಆತ್ಮ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದಟ್ ಬೋಧ ರೂಪಿ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಟಿ ಐ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ತಿರೋಭೂತ ಪಾರ್ಶಲಿ ಇನ್ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ವೇಲ್ಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೇಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಲ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಐ ನೋ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ಮೀ ಬೈ ಮೈ ನೇಮ್ ಐ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಟರ್ನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ವೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಆಸ್ ಮೀ ಆರ್ ಯು ದೇರ್ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ದಟ್ ಅಹ ಮಸ್ ಮೀ ಅಹ ಮಸ್ ಮೀ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದಟ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಟಿ ಐ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಟಿ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಈಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಆಭರಣ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಲಿಪ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಮೋಹ ಮೋಹ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡೆಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೋಹ ಅನಾತ್ಮಾನ ಓಕೆ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಬಾಡಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಶರೀರ ಕಲಯತಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮಾನ ಶರೀರ ಕಲಯತಿ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಶರೀರ ಇತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ರೈಟ್ ನೌ ಇಸ್ ದ ಶರೀರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ನೌ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ from the point of the individual for me the individual this thula sharira sukshma sharira karana sharira is the anatma and therefore what happens atmana mohad anatmana mohad aham iti i am the anatma iti out of confusion i take myself to be this shariram tataha after that what happens after i have confused and i do not know myself to be the atma i know i am but i do not know i am that atma then who am i falsely i project myself to be this body mind sense complex what is this projection it is the vikshepa shakti of maya tataha from there kama krodha prabhruti bihi amomo bandhana gunaihi so rajo guna of maya projects this body mind sense complex as the reality and i develop raga kama and krodha because i identify myself with this body mind sense complex kama krodha we saw in in bhagavad gita kama yesha krodha yesha rajoguna samudbhavah so this rajoguna of maya not only makes me identify myself with this body mind sense complex but makes me full of raga kama krodha dvesha etc so all this rajoguna qualities come about in me so he says param vipshe vikshe pakhya rajasah uru shakti hi uru shakti hi means a strong power of rajas the strong power of maya which is born out of rajoguna it projects a vikshepa vikshepa means it projects vikshepakya param vikshepakya it creates a grand illusion a grand delusion vikshepa like a projection of a movie it creates and it is created out of what rajasaha out of rajas this is created and this becomes a strong raga dvesha uru shakti hi last word uru shakti vyathayati the strong force the rajoguna's strong force in the form of raga dvesha because of my entanglement with this thula sharira sukshma sharira gives rise to dukha for me vyathayati this is how the bondage is continued and it is sustained next in the next verse in the 144th verse he says that he summarizes these two shaktis and what does he say here yeta bhyame va shakti bhyam bandah pumsah samagatah ya bhyam vimohito deham matvah atmanam bhramayatyayam so these two very very strong forces of maya we saw all about maya two sessions ago 
now we are seeing a different aspect of maya the two powers of maya the tamoguna of maya which can actually cover or veil the truth and the rajogunam of maya which can project something which is unreal that is what is happening in the jagat also it covers the brahman which is the adhisthanam of the entire universe which is the avarna and projects a false universe of names and forms when it comes to me the individual it veils or does the avarna of my real nature of atma and it projects vikshepa shaktiya it projects a wrong notion a wrong confusion and a notion that i am the body mind sense complex so ultimately the avarna shakti and the vikshepa shakti of maya give rise to what delusion and confusion delusion and confusion about what really i am and what i am not i am confused about what i am and i take myself to be what i am not so i don't know what i am i don't know what i am not but i take myself to be what i am not and forget what i am see the fun i am i don't know what i am i take myself to be what i am not this is what is happening with the two shaktis of maya so he says yeta bhyam eva shakti bhyam with these two shaktis avarna shakti and vikshepa shakti these are all very important aspects of vedanta as to how the bondage is brought about maybe difficult for the first time listeners but one has to listen again and again it is very logical if you look at this there is nothing to just believe in what is said it's very 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 logical when something is partially covered we always mistake it to be something else we have always seen a tree being mistaken for a or a plant or a small shrub being mistaken for a person standing there in dim light something is fallen on the road in a dim light i take it to be something else this is avarna and vikshepa that is what is happening which is a classical example given of raju and sarpa in our vedantic teaching so yeta bhyam eva shakti bhyam by these two shaktis of avarna and vikshepa bandhah pumsah samagatah this is how the bandha has come why should it come like this this is the mula avidya this is the avidya with which we are born because of this confusion only the transactions of the world are taking place because of this confusion only maya is able to go on creating millions and millions and millions of creations so why it has come it is there it is anadi which was said earlier anadi from beginningless time it has come but we can end it with this knowledge by understanding what i am by understanding my real nature and understanding i am not the body mind sense complex i can end this confusion for myself therefore he says yeta bhyam that is going to be told later how i can end this with the help of guru and shastra how i can end this confusion and delusion for myself is talked about later now yeta bhyam eva shakti bhyam bandah pumsah a human being is continuously going from confusion to confusion every life is a confusion life after life i am born in confusion i live my life in confusion and die in confusion come back again with the same confusion and maya is successful at her handy work her means because maya is streeling up that is why i am saying her maya is capable of carrying on her work of avarna and vikshepa without any disturbance unless by some grace of ishvara and by my purva punya i start enquiring into this like we saw in the first few verses of viveka chudamani when i realize that there must be something other than what i am going through i can't be just coming like this again and again and going back there must be something other than this the truth must be something else and when i enquire into it then i find out what the truth is many times we don't even know that we are in an illusion that is the maya i am i am in an illusion i am deluded 
but I'm not even aware that Bhranti is something which I'm not even aware. Sometime in this only, he compares, Shankaracharya comes out, compares it to a drugged or a drunk person. A drunk person or a drugged person, the Bhranti is so much that the person does not even realize this, it is his Bhranti. So we are not even aware of this delusion. And therefore, what happens? Yabhyam vimohitaha deham matva, considering myself out of moha to be this body, mind, sense complex. Brahmayati ayam, I keep coming back. Again and again and again, I keep coming back into this samsara. And what kind of a samsara is this? That is what is going to be told in the next verse. That is the 145th verse. In the 145th verse, the type of samsara, what is this samsara is being talked about. We may not be able to complete it, but this verse is very similar to Urdhva Mula Madashakam. If you remember the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the first verse, Urdhva Mula Madashakam Ashvatam Prahurabhyayam Chandasi Yasya Parnani Yastam Veda Saveda Vet. That particular verse, the same verse is going to be described here as to what is this samsara. Out of this confusion and delusion, what kind of a samsara I beget as a jiva begets this samsara again and again and again. What kind of a samsara is this? That is what is going to be talked about in the 145th verse. Bijaha samsriti bhoomi jasyatu tamo dehatma dhirankuraha ragaha pallavam ambu karma tu vapkam ambu karma tu vapuhu skandaha asavaha shakhikaha agrani indriya samhatischa vishayaha pushpani Dukham phalam, nana karma samudbhavam, bahu vidham bhokta atra jiva khagaha. The jiva or the individual is compared to a bird which is perched on a tree, the tree of samsara, jumping up and down. We have an Upanishad called Mundaka Upanishad in which also we have a similar thing which is explained where it is said Dvasuparana Sayuja Sakhaya How a Jiva bird is jumping about up and down in the various branches of the tree of life. Of course, it is given in little differently in Bhagavad Gita and in Katopanishad also Urdhva Mulam Avakshakaha It is the same verse is available in the Katopanishad also from where Lord Krishna has taken it and incorporated into Bhagavad Gita. So what is this samsara into which this jiva who is confused by the avarana shakti and vikshepa shakti of maya comes back again and again. And what is it? How this sustained, this bondage is sustained? How the tree of samsara and this bondage is sustained? That is talked about here. He says... Bijam samsriti bhujas samsriti bhumi jasya tu tamaha. Bhumija means a tree. Tree is the one which comes out of the earth. Therefore, a tree is called as a bhumija. What is the seed of this tree of samsara which keeps coming again and again? Tamaha. Bijaha samsriti bhumi jasya tu tamaha. Samsriti means samsara. For this samsara vrikshaha, for this tree of samsara, what is the bijam? What is the seed? It is the ignorance. The moguna of maya or ignorance. This veiling, this ignorance of what really I am. This is what called the tamaha. Then what is the ankuraha? What is the sapling that comes out of this bija? Dehatmadhihi ankuraha. Deha Atmadhi. I am the body. I am as good as the body. I am as limited as the body. This Dehatma Bhava. Dehatma Bhava means what? I am the body. Iti idea. That is the sapling of this tree. That is how the tree starts growing 
in the amkuraha sapling form the bija is the tamoguna avaranam of maya and this give rise to the vikshepa where i say i am the body mind sense complex this becomes the sapling the beginning of the tree of samsara then ragaha pallavam the foliage the leaves of this tree are raga kamas different desires as many leaves and foliage is there in the tree those many desires i have those many kamas i have wanting something becoming something all the time wanting this wanting that becoming something not happy with what i am there are millions of things which i want not satisfied with anything so ragaha the desire for attaining things which i don't have and attachment to the things that i have is raga that is the difference between kama and raga kama is what desire to possess and attain things i don't have raga is the attachment to the things which i have and which i possess so kama and raga are like the pallavas or like the foliage ambu karma the karma all the actions that we do karma is like water it is like watering the plant the karmas are the ambu because when you water the plant it grows the phala comes that's why karma in the form of karma phala becomes the water that i plant by water with which this tree of samsara grows ambu karma hatu vapuhu skandaha this body becomes the main stem of the tree of samsara everything else is around it the main tree of samsara the main stem becomes the vapuhu i am the body the tree of samsara so much entanglement so much attachment to this body then skandaha asavaha shakhikaha i am reading the second line asavaha the pranas the pranamaya kosha the prana the physiological body the prana is the shakhikas the branches the prana is the one which makes me do all the karma and the prana is the shakhas or the branches then agrani indriya samhatischa third line the tip tips of the twigs you know when the tips of the branches have got small twigs where actually the new leaves come the flowers come the fruits come so agrani means the twigs which are at the end of these branches or shoots they are nothing but the indriyas the indriya samhati that means the group of indriyas are as though the tips of the twigs which are coming out of these branches vishayaha pushpani all the objects of the world are like flowers they are like pushpani naturally when the pallavas when the foliage is raga or kama all the vishayas become the object of my kama and they are like flowers i want them i want them i flower my desires flower in the form of getting whatever objects i want vishayaha pushpani phalam dukham phalam is dukham <laughs> sometimes that's why people say vedanta is very morbid it always says dukha is there no sukha at all but we have to understand one thing if you see our own lives if you see sukha is there but the sukha is always momentary sukha is always a seed for the dukha to come dukha is always something which lasts a longer time dukha is always something which is stronger whereas sukha is something much weaker and lasts for a very short time therefore and less of a sukhi and more of a dukhi therefore he says dukham phalam what is the phalam what is the fruit that is born out of this karma phala the karma phalas are the fruits the flowers are the you know the objects which i utilize for which i desire and whatever karma i do to get these objects the karma phala is what the fruits of my karma are the karma phala because with the karma i have watered this tree and i have got these fruits also so when i get the fruit i have to eat the fruit the fruit may be sweet it may be sour it may be bitter whatever it may be i have to eat that fruit so dukham is phalam and nana karma samudbhavam bahuvidham bhokta atra jeevah 
this jiva i am the experiencer of all these things and i am like a bird this jiva which is within this body is like a bird which is in this body today tomorrow when this body falls the jiva flies away comes back onto the tree of samsara into another body lives there for some time waters the plant goes through the karmas experiences the karma phalas leaves this body and goes again goes to another branch gets another body goes through the same thing again and again millions and millions and millions of lives the same thing is gone through again and again and this jiva is who nana karma samudbhavam bahu vidham so as this bird jiva bird different kinds of karmas i do different experiences i experience most of the experiences are in the form of dukha and this jiva me continue to inhabit this tree of samsara i never leave this tree of samsara i am all the time there i may be on one branch higher branch in some other loka next life come down to another branch i may be born in any of the lokas as any of the jiva but then because of this avarna shakti and vikshepa shakti because of this confusion and delusion i keep like a bird coming back again and <clears throat> again and again into this tree of samsara i do not try to find out what is the moolam what is the root of this samsara viksha i don't try to find out what does krishna say in bhagavad gita you have to find out what is the moolam what is it that sustains this tree of samsara and cut this tree of samsara jnanena asanga shastrena tridena chitva he says with the acts of wisdom and vairagya cut this cut asadder this tree of samsara which bhagwan said in the 15th chapter so this is how it is sustained so what did we see what is bandha o nama bandha we saw anatmani atma iti buddhi is bandha kathamesha agatah how did it come about bhagwan talked about the two shaktis the avarna shakti and the vikshepa shakti because of which this particular bondage has come about how is it sustained this was talked about as the tree of samsara how the particular samsara for a jiva bird is continued again and again so the three questions ko nama bandha kathamesha agatah asya ka pratishta is already talked about next is katham vimokshah asmad what is the answer for me where is the question of how is this that i am going to get out of this that we'll see in the next session but what he says is ultimately one has to surrender to the guru and shruti pramana and understand my real nature sort out this confusion the only way to get freedom from this kind of bandha is to surrender to the shastra scriptures and the guru and understand what i am really what i am not and then get out of this tree of samsara which we will see in the next session from the 148th verse which is how does one get freedom from this samsara tree how does one get freedom from continuous sustenance of this bondage bondage does not come and go away i have to make it go away as long as i hold on to it bondage continues <clears throat> it is sustained it is self sustaining self sustaining like what we saw like how a tree sustains itself it sustains itself i have to put an end to it i have to jump out of the tree of samsara how do i jump out of the tree of samsara that is what is going to be talked about in the future verses i think we should finish with this om nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushaka avastha shambhavi mesu prasanno sugurustada sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu मा कशि दुखमाया ओं शाति 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 ओं तत्सत